Praise the Lord. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of First John. I think it's something you should be able to say offhand by now. In chapter 5, verse 4, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. But I want to add one more verse, and that's verse 6. And he says, or rather verse 5. It says, Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Hallelujah. He, he will see that overcometh the world. He that believeth that, is son, he believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Who, that, who overcomes the world? Does it, just, does it just mean who believes? Is it he that believeth that? So there's something he has to believe. Praise the Lord. And that is what? That Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God somebody. You know, it's still in my spirit what God just said right now. Let's, let's not be moved by information. A lot of times when people come for, for conferences like this, they, they go back with such information. Just like what Pastor Bumi said, we find ourselves not hearing well. Not hearing well. When, when, when the devil came to the Garden of Eden, he said, did God say you should not eat out of this? You know, uh, uh, you know uh, Eve responded because she didn't have full information. And as a result, man fell. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing this? So whatever you do, don't get excited. This is not a place where people just get excited. It's good to respond to the word of God and be delighted by it. But the most important thing is not you getting delighted, but, but you ginomai. You bring it into being. Make it tangible. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the entrance of the word tonight that gives light. Cause me to speak your word with simplicity and power. Override my thought with your counsel and let my lips speak of your will. Let men be stead, impacted even by the gospel in my mouth tonight. In Jesus, and we pray, the church said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The, bar, the scripture says, Whatsoever is born of God, he said, Whatso, Whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. For whatsoever, rather, is born of God overcometh the world. And he said, Who is he that overcometh the world? He's asking that question, and he answers the question. He said, But he that believeth on his name. Praise the Lord. Now, the first thing we see here, you know, I want to teach on what I titled The Faith, the Anointing, and the Vessel. The faith, the anointing, and the vessel. And I want to just quickly do justice because of time tonight so that, um, you know, we can quickly, you know, round off. Praise the Lord. So the Spirit of God wants us to understand a lot of things in camp meetings. So camp meeting is not a time where you're looking at your wristwatch. All right? Praise the Lord. I think I've given you feeds. Hallelujah. Victory is not by, is not by how many weapons you have on your side physically. Victory is for those that are born by the Holy Ghost or born of God. The word of is the most important word in that scripture because the word of talks about the origin of that thing. When I say Bowali of Lagos, all right, the most important thing there is the word of because it tells about the origin. The Greek word is X and it talks about the origin of something. Praise the Lord. And so we, are, we, are, we heal from above. We're not just this guy that people see in the flesh, this woman that people see in the flesh. You know, that's why I like the way she puts it. You know, it's, not, it's more than being a mother. It's more than being all those things. At the end of the day, you want to be who God wants you to be. Praise the Lord. So victory is by regeneration. It's not by the weapons you're able to gather around you. Praise the Lord. If I'm regenerated, meaning if I'm born again, because that's what happens. A man that is born of God is a man that is regenerated. Now the word re comes in because we fell in Adam. And so as a result, we lost a lot of things in Adam. And so one of the corruption of all things that took place in Adam is the fact that man could not operate in victory anymore according as ordained by the gene of God that is in him. And so at salvation, what happened is there's an awakening of that gene. There is a quickening. Paul said to the Ephesians that we were dead in our trespasses. We were dead. So it was like a, a, a corpse. And so eventually he couldn't do anything. He couldn't even if he wanted to. Hallelujah. But in Jesus, that's why he made emphasis on he that believeth on the Son of God. That's why he's made him, making emphasis on he, who that, he that is born of God. He's talking about you being born again. Praise the Lord. So every child of God in you, if you're born again, wrapped up in your spirit is the spirit of victory. Hallelujah. It's not something you need to get a weapon to bring and all of that. It's something that is already on the inside of you and it works all the time. Praise the Lord. 
you are 10 times better than Adam. You are 10 times better than all the people in the Old Testament. You know, if John is the least in the kingdom according to Jesus, and then John represents all of them. In fact, he's the best of the Old Testament prophets, praise the Lord. Because the Bible said the spirit of Elijah rested upon him. So if they are best, is the least in the kingdom of God. That means where the kingdom of God is concerned, that is God's way of operation is concerned, you know, we are better, not just than John, because if you are better than John, it means you are better than Elijah. Are you hearing me? If you are better than John, you are better than Habakkuk and all the Elijahs and all the Jeremiahs put together. Praise the Lord. That's why we can talk like a child now. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah maybe had a reason to feel that way. But we are no more like that because we have the Spirit of God on the inside of us. He even tells us what to answer him. He tells us what to. That's why we have to hear him. Like Pastor said, you know, we got to hear what God is saying. We got to see what he's saying. Praise the Lord. You see, you couldn't see it. You couldn't see it because the Holy Ghost was upon him. It was limited. Hallelujah. But now we have all of God on the inside of us and that makes us the most powerful, the most powerful creation that God has ever made. Praise the Lord. We are the most powerful workmanship of God and we have to keep it that way even where situations are concerned. Hallelujah. So he said he that is, he was, whatsoever is born of God. So our, our victory is born out of our regeneration. So it's victory by regeneration. It's not victory by how many weapons you can gather. It's not about how many weapons you can find to fight people and then and raise a caliphate. It's not about that. It's about the, what is on the inside of you. Praise the Lord, somebody. So we got to understand this. And that's why we need to embrace the word of God and understand it very well. You see, if you can only understand and go tonight with this revelation that to have victory means to be born of God. A Gentile or a, an unbeliever or a sinner cannot operate victory in anything. The devil is going to mess him up. The world is going to mess him up. They're going to turn his world up, upside down. They're going to rock his boat. Why? Because it doesn't have what it takes to overcome the world. Hallelujah. And that's why we need to understand these things that God wants to bring us to a place where our faith is not just a decoration in our spirit. Our faith is a weapon for it. Hallelujah. You know, because it says that whatsoever come, uh, overcome the world, it said this is a victory that overcomes the world. This is a victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Praise the Lord. Now, what you got, what, again, what you must understand that the faith he's talking about here is not a joint faith. Or he's not talking about uh, um, uh, 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 my faith and your faith and everybody's faith. The truth is we have um, a common denominator where faith is concerned. What do I mean by that? We, we uh, believe in one God, one Father, one Spirit, one, one, one God, one, 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 one baptism, right? That is where our faith becomes common, all right? But the faith is still, even though he said our faith, even our, our faith, what he's saying is are two realities here. First of all, he wants us to understand that there is no child of God that is without faith, all right? So there's no such a thing as, okay, thank God for the gift of faith, which is not about you not having victory. If you don't have that, that means you don't have victory. That's not the issue, all right? It's an add-on, praise the Lord. It's an add-on. It's not that you don't have the capability to overcome things because you don't have the gift of faith. But you see, every child of God, the Bible says, he has dealt with every man the measure. The measure. He didn't say a measure. He said the measure of faith, Romans 12. So it means that God has dealt with us with what? The measure of faith. When I say the measure, it means that if you buy four liters in, a, in corn oil in Nigeria, and you buy four liters in Owando in Nigeria, your, your tank should come to the same level. That's what it means. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because it's the same country, and it's the same, it's the same measure that they and the same price that they sell it all right Owando does not say uh no no today we just want to sell it a lower or higher price everybody is is, is, is a monopoly or right? i mean there's no monopoly in that market and that's what god is saying when they when it comes to the issue of faith there's no monopoly where faith is concerned where the kingdom is concerned hallelujah there's no monopoly there's no i got it more than you hallelujah but there's something i can grow it better than you are you hearing what i'm saying here he has dealt with all of us the same measure of faith. In fact, God did not withhold his spirit from us. He gave us all of himself in us. That's why it would be wrong for you to pray for more of God. That's why it would be wrong for you to say, come Holy Spirit. That's why it would be wrong for you to say, uh, Lord, send revival. God doesn't do all those things. God doesn't do all those things because those things are already wrapped on the inside of you. 
He doesn't need to come to you. He doesn't need to be welcomed in a service. Are you hearing this? He doesn't need it because when you walked in, he walked in. When you walked in, he walked in because he's on the inside of you. Are you calling him out? Are you calling him out to come here and play the keyboard? No. He's already here because you are here. Praise the Lord. And that's why our presence matters because his presence matters. We cannot just carry this presence. Some of you carry such a revelation, such treasure in your human spirit. And then you allow a, 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 a situation to rob you and make you a coward of situations. And you talk like the unbelievers. And you talk like he was not on the inside of you. And you react as though you don't know who he is. And you react like one of those people in the world. You know, Solomon said there's an arrow in the world. I've seen the children of God walking on bare ground. And I've seen the unbelievers, the sinners, the unrighteous, you know, climbing on very beautiful white horses. Hallelujah. Why? Because we, you know, that's why the Bible says we have to speak. Say so your communication of faith should be as a result of the acknowledging of what is on the inside of you. So faith is not just something that's inside there. Faith is something that has to be acknowledged. Hallelujah. Say me, say I acknowledge my faith. Say, I acknowledge that I have faith. Come on, talk to me tonight. Say, I have the, say, I acknowledge that I have faith. The word acknowledge means I recognize. Say, I recognize that I have faith that overcomes the world. Hallelujah. So God is a spirit, and that's why we are a spirit. Man is a spirit as well. And he has given the same light that is himself on the, in him unto us. Hallelujah. That's why he's given us the written word. Why do we have to read the Bible every day? Have you noticed why we have to read it? We got to read the Bible. Everybody's talking about reading the Bible, reading the Bible, reading the Bible. Why? It's not a religious thing. That's where faith comes from. Why? Because we can't operate in his life without that material. And that's why I love atmosphere like this. I love a place where we give God the right to penetrate situation and, 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 and take our man-made agenda away so that he can give us a new, uh, a new vision for the year to come. A new vision maybe for the next Are you hearing this? When we, when we feed on faith, we're we are feeding on a heaven class. Hallelujah. Heaven class treasure. Hallelujah. He said, as his divine life has given us all things. As his divine Zoe, not just the life, not the social life. That's why the life displayed on this stage tonight was not a social life, was not even a marital life, was not a financial life. It was not all those things that we always talk about in church today. It's about something. He said, as his divine life has given us all things. He said, divine life. The word life, there is Zoe. So the Zoe of God in us. He said, as it pertains to life, as it pertains to Zoe, hallelujah. His divine life has given us what? All things at, as it concerns Zoe. Not as it concerns your, your media status. Not as it concerns your position in the church. Not as it concerns the way what people say or what don't say about you. Not as it concerns what, uh, your, how many people are following you on Facebook. Are you hearing this? It's about the Zoe in you. That's why I like the way she puts it that God doesn't see you the way you see yourself. He sees you in the way where you are set. And he has set you above nations. So when he looks at you, he's wondering, the nations are put under you, where are they? Where are those tribes and tongues that you are meant to be a blessing to? Yes, I know you're married. Yes, I know you finished with a first class. I know you're a business career woman. And you've got all, it's going on cool for you. That's cool. But at the end of the day, I am too jealous to watch you succeed in your career. And you're not succeeding in what I called you to do. Because at the judgment seat, I'm not going to ask you how much of my word you use for your career. Come on, talk to me tonight. I'm not going to ask you how much of my word you use to give birth. And how much of my word you use to get a job. And how much of my word you use to get cars and houses. And people say he's a blessed man. He said, I'm, it's not that. I'm going to ask how much of this word, this material, did you use to unleash the heavenly vision. That is wrapped up on the inside of you. The very reason why you were born in the first place. The very is because when God talks about being born, He's not looking at your family. You see, your family had a dream for your life. And they said you're going to become a doctor. And you're going to become a lawyer. And then they tell they buy jam from for you. And then you went to that school in Harvard. And you came back to Nigeria. And then you secured a very nice job. And you met a very nice man. And then you got married so blissfully. And everybody just want to be like you. Those things are good. 
and faith can do those things as well. But when God talks about being born, he's not talking about you being born to do something else. The way your, mind, your, your parents in the flesh gave birth to you and they had a dream concerning you. At birth, they reminded of them something. In fact, they named you that name because it, it, it tells them something about you. You came at a certain time, so they gave you that name. You represent something to them. Are you hearing this? And so they had that vision for you. So they want to care. So they want to make sure you get everything you want to get. Remember, I remember somebody saying, this, my, this, this child of mine would never go through what I went through. What a vision from a good father. But you see, when God looks at us, he doesn't look at us from the, our birth in the flesh. All right? That's why he said, he that is born of the flesh is of the flesh. But he that is born of the spirit. He that is born of the water and is born of the blood. So when Jesus, when God looks at you, your profile transcends just where you were born and the visions you have in the flesh. It's good to have visions in the flesh. According to the flesh, be the best. I preach that too. And you should be that too. You be the best at your work. Be the best at your job. Be the best at whatever you do in life. And let people know that you carry God in you. But you see, those things become shallow because the moment we begin to consider something more superior, then those things become very shallow. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? The most important meaning of your life is not going to be because you became a doctor or lawyer. The, mo the most important meaning of your life is that you fulfilled the God-given assignment in your life. Are you hearing this? So the way your father laughs and smiles and say, oh, at last you did what I thought and what we saw about you. You are that man now. You are that woman now. It's the same way God looks at you and says at the end of time and, and asks and wonder, did he become that? That's why he sends messages and ministers like this that will stare you and remind you in his word. That you are not born of this world. So I'm not going to give you a vision for the world. Come on, talk to me. You're not born of this world. So I'm not going to get excited simply because you made a straight A or a distinction in your so-called masters. I'm not going to get excited about that because that is, those things actually fulfill the vision in the flesh. But your vision in the realm of the spirit is what we're talking about. Hallelujah. And he says that is born of God. So he tells us where we're going from the day we were born. We don't have to discover it when Jam gave us the good score. Come on, talk to me. We didn't have to say, now I think I can make it. At the moment of salvation, we were born with victory. And we can say, I can overcome the world. And I have to look for an assignment. That's why I call it faith. I call it the faith, the vessel, and the anointing. Hallelujah. The faith, the vessel, these three things, are, you are the host of all these three things. Hallelujah. And so no matter what we talk about, we're going to always talk about the host. Hallelujah. Say, I'm the host of the anointing. Say, I'm the host of faith. Say, I'm a faith man. Say, faith is in my spirit. Say, I can do what he says I can do. Hallelujah. So God wants us to be the best in whatever we do, but he's referring to what he has created us to do. Hallelujah. Now, in Hebrews 11, the Bible talks about faith. And it mentions the heroes of faith. But in verse 6, he said, but, he said, but it is impossible. Hallelujah. You know, he's a seed, the Hebrew author, as he goes on, and he knows what he's about to tell you about the heroes of faith. He stops and says, but wait, before I go on, let's, let's, the, the real thing I want you to see here is not to be like Abraham. Come on, can I talk to you tonight? It, it's not for you to read it and then all of a sudden, Samson becomes your hero of faith. No, I'm not teaching this so that you can know the heroes of faith. How many heroes of faith were mentioned? No, that's not why I'm writing this. But it's impossible to please God without faith. And then you look at everybody he mentioned, the pleasing was not about what they did in the flesh. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't know how many men of God we have in the house, but it's not just about having ties and suits. It's not about just sitting in church and you are a leader. It's not about that. It's about you having a vision from God. That's when you become a man of God. So how many men of God do we have in the house tonight? How many women of God do we have in the house tonight? God gave me a word and I'm working on it. And I'm not talking about a word that will give me a car. I'm talking about a word that will just give me a house. And they say, wow, that church, their pastor has many houses. Who cares about houses? Are you hearing what I'm saying? At the end of the day, there are some people that that's all they are called to do. 
And I'm talking about the unbelievers. That's all they think about. They think about jewelers every day. You can't really beat them at their game. Because one day God's going to tell you that that your precious Isaac, take him to the mountain called Moriah and kill him. Are you catching what I'm saying? They can do that. They say, what? Do what? No, if that's it, forget it. Are you catching what I'm saying? Because we live by faith and we walk by faith. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying here tonight? So you got to understand this truth. That it's not about you knowing the heroes of faith. It's about you knowing faith itself. So, but it is impossible to please God without faith. What does it mean to please God then? It means that I have to do things that can show forth his glory in my life. God is not pleased when people are dying without him. Because it is the will of the Father that the whole world comes to him. And so when people die in France and people die in, uh, in uh, different countries in the name of terrorism, God's not happy about that. God's not saying, wow, some people have died again. Okay, I don't know what we're going to. No, no, he is he's sad about it. Hallelujah. He's sad about it. He's wondering what's going on. Have I not given somebody this? Have I not shown somebody this? Has somebody not heard me when I, come on, talk to me. He, that's what he's wondering because he has fixed everything. There's nothing that's going to come to God and he goes, wow, I never, saw, I never saw it coming. No, he sees everything. Hallelujah. He sees everything. I said he sees everything. The Bible says he framed the world, the worlds with his word. He framed the word by faith. He framed the word. He said the, the elders obtained a good report. And so he framed the word frame is katatizo. And he's talking about you bringing something into alignment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we need to understand that God wants us to live in the realms of faith. Hallelujah. So overcoming the world must be perceived from winning the world. Overcoming the world must be defined. Must be perceived as winning the world. Not getting popular in the world. Not getting married in the world. Not buying cars in the world. It's about winning the world. It's not about how many, you know, overcoming your enemies. I've overcome my enemies. So that you can buy another car. Or get another house. Maybe buy another Marry another wife. Whatsoever, whosoever that is born of God must get whatsoever. And this whatsoever, there is a word that comes after it. That's why it says whatsoever. So tonight I want us to put some words there. If we're not of this word and it's not whatsoever life, whatsoever car, whatsoever house, because that's not the big deal. Praise the Lord. Then what is, what, what is God talking about? He's talking about the world, remember? The word, when God said the word, it wasn't referring to enemies in the world. No, he's referring to the people that are without Christ. As I say, the one that overcometh is the one that believes that Jesus is the son of God. So the born again Christian. So when we, when we have to overcome them, it means that there has to be some kind of fight, some kind of battle. So why are we fighting them? We're not fighting them. We're winning them. So to overcome the world is to win the world for Christ. To overcome the world is to win the world for Christ. To overcome the world is to be conscious of the assignment. Oh, to overcome the world is to get whatsoever nation, whatsoever tribe, whatsoever tongues, whatsoever intention, whatsoever purpose that God has given to you, whatsoever plan, concept, and assignment that he has given to me. That's what overcoming is. So we are overcomers not because we, we overcame uh, 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 our boss and then he increased our salary. That's shallow. That is an insult on your faith. We're talking about what God, what really matters to God. Hallelujah. So when we say taking the divine presence of God to the nations of the world, the Bible, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says his word in him are yes and amen. So everything he has called me to do and the words that he has given to me and the promises and those Rema books and the words that he told me and the promises of God and the words that he told me 10 years ago, 2 years ago, last night, this morning, the Bible said they are yes and amen. Are you hearing this? The amen means it has come to pass. They are yes and has come to pass. Are you hearing this? So it's something that will come to pass. It's something that must come to pass. And so when God said go to the, take the divine presence of God to the nation, there are things that must come to pass. They are yes already. They are already ticked as yes. It's not ever going to get to no because there is a government in the world that says, hey, no more. Are you hearing this? It's already yes. 
the assignments of God, the, the, the vision and the purposes of God for your life, is not going to change. No matter how, how you claim the devil dealt with you in this world, and this age is having, a, is having a, a wrong impact on you, and all those things, it's not going to change the size of what God has called you to do. It's still going to be the same thing. It's still going to be the same thing. You're still going to wake up at 85, and God is still telling you, are you ready now? Because, are you catch what I'm saying? I can, I can strengthen you now to do it. Oh, I saw when, I heard when Caleb said to Joshua, he said, you remember that mountain? And Joseph said, I remember, Joshua said, I remember that mountain 42 years ago when we were telling Moses that land, can you remember that mountain? He said, now we got to do it. Are you hearing this? We got to do it. So it's not too late to overcome the world that God has called you to overcome. The nations that he has called you to overcome. The tribes that he has called you to overcome. Overcome them means win them. Overcome them means give them a purpose. Let, give them the father's dream for their lives. Let them know that there exists more than just what people have seen. That's the vision of this house. And that's how we are going to have victory by our faith as a church. Because the word of God is faith. And the word of God that has come to us is to take his divine presence to the nation. In other words, you are going to get victory in every nation that you take my presence to. You know why? Because my words to you are yes and has come to pass. So say amen to that. So three things are very powerful. Faith, the faith of the believer is the victory according to the scripture. Anointing of the spirit. You know, the anointing of the spirit, when faith challenges you, or faith is challenged, and the vessel, which is the host of both faith and the anointing. Now, the believer is the host of the word of faith and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says Jesus said, the Bible said the spirit of the Lord was upon Jesus, and he went about doing good. He said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. He has anointed me to preach. He didn't just say he has anointed me. Some of us claim that we are anointed, but we do not attach work or assignment to what we are anointed about. It's just anointed. Oh, it was an anointed service. Okay, what, what did he do to you? That's why Jesus was called the anointed one and he's anointed. They didn't just call him Christ. They called him Christ because of what they saw him do. They saw his assignment and they called him Christ. Are you hearing this? It's not his middle name. It's not about a name. It's about a life. He had become an epistle. He had become a revolution on two legs. They saw God when they saw him. Nobody left him the same way they came to him. He was everywhere doing good. He was healing them that were oppressed all the time. He never told them, get away. You know, he was everywhere loving. He was everywhere conscious. He said, while it is day, I will do the work of him that has sent me. He was, he was stricken by assignment. He woke up every day thinking about his profile in the realm of a spirit. Yes, they saw a carpenter. Yes, they saw the, the son of Mary. Yes, they saw someone that was losing his mind because he said he was God. But he, he, he would never change his mind. And when they called them Christians at Antioch, I believe they called them Christians because they saw them and they saw Jesus in them. Are you hearing this? And until we bring you to a place where people see Jesus in you, where you see Jesus and people see him in you, then we have not started at all. Are you hearing this? That's how we're going to overcome. Touch someone and say, that's how, that's, that's the way to go. That's how we're going to overcome. We're not, we're not going to overcome just by sitting around in the church. We're going to overcome by being conscious that we are the host of the word of faith. That we are the host of the spirit of God. Without us, there's no faith in the world. He said to every man, some, place, some people in the gospel, he said, shall I find faith when I come? When I, shall I can't find faith on the earth? Why? Because he's saying, I need you to do things that people can see and they will say faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So your anointing should be, should, be, should be defined based on what people see you do. You see, people know how to recognize the anointing because they see the work. Now, I'm not talking about the anointing that just come and say this time tomorrow and nothing happens this time tomorrow. And then we are foolish enough to go back there and say, yeah, you said tomorrow, but it didn't happen. The, the word of God is at work at all times. Praise the Lord. Whether it's spoken by 
John or is spoken by Peter or is spoke, spoken by Kule. The word of God is quick and is sharper than any two-edged sword. Hallelujah. That's why the word of God in your mouth when it's spoken with faith. It will deliver the kingdom of God. It will deliver victory in this age. Victory in this cosmos. No matter the arrangement and the decorations of the world. No matter the gimmicks of the adversary. How he tried to kill them. How he tried to deceive them. How he tried to blind their eyes. You see he's doing those things because he wants a battle. I woke up this morning. I said Jesus. I said, I said the truth is the devil needs to know in this camp meeting. That now I see every unbeliever as a sign and an invitation to fight him are you hearing this you see we fight the devil because uh, we, we some of us go back you know saying uh, casting out the devil because uh, there was a cockroach on our wall or some girl wall ghetto and we said that's in my mind the village and she has become wall ghetto and we, we, we that's when we fight are, are you hearing me but we got to learn how to fight when we see unbelievers the bible said jesus wept when he saw he saw them they were sheep and they didn't have a shepherd they were sheep and he, he wept because of that. You see, you, have got to, you, you get to that point because he saw himself responsible for that. He said, I got to die on time. I got to become seen for these people. They are without a shepherd. And that's why I need to be that person. They need a savior. They need a vision. They need somebody to be their pastor. I need somebody to be their leader. I need somebody to show them the light. He said they were sheep and he cried and he wept. Are you hearing this? So we need to get to that point as Christians. Where we are conscious of the faith of God that is on the, on the inside of us. And conscious that we are the vessel of these three things. Praise the Lord somebody. Hallelujah. So you can't speak of the two without mentioning a name. When I talk about faith in the Bible, the Bible talks about faith and he mentioned faith heroes. From Enoch to Gideon to Samson. He mentioned all of them. Are you hearing this? He said there is no time to actually mention every other thing. He said since you read the other Bible... The other books in the Bible, you should know these things. So the Hebrew author said, I can't continue to write this. You guys should know. Hallelujah. You know these things. They, they, they use, the, the faith was about the kingdom. Hallelujah. It was about winning all the time. It was about winning all the time. It's about overcoming all the time. He raises a king and he said, go to the other nation and overcome it. Are you hearing this? No reason for it. Why? No reason. I just want them to worship me. I want them to worship me. I want them to know me. I want them to. And you are the one I'm going to send to that place. Hallelujah. Who overcomes the world? The believer. Not God. Not, the, not, not just uh, uh, God come and overcome. The, no. The God cannot overcome this world except through you. You are the one that will overcome this world. Say I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. Say I'm an overcomer. Say I'm the overcomer. Hallelujah. Go to Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Hebrews chapter 2, sorry, verse 1. Therefore, the Bible says, we ought to give earnest heed. Uh, let me get there. He said, therefore, we ought to give more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let him sleep. For if the word was spoken by angels, was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Which, is, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Pastor Bumi talked about hearing God. And he said, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. For unto the angels are they not put in subjection the world to come. He said, but in verse 6, he said, but one in a certain place testified, saying, what is man? This is Psalms being quoted. And he says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? That, that's the son of man that thou visitest him. Now you begin to understand where the Hebrew author is coming from. When God visits you, it's not one day of getting high in the Holy Ghost. He visited you and then you got a car. That's not what God wants to do when he visits you. Uh, are you hearing this? When he visits you, he's coming to tell you something about his kingdom. That's when you receive visitation. So this, oh, three days of visitation and it was all about you, all about your car, all about your job, all about your getting your boyfriend and girlfriend. No, no, that's not visitation. Hallelujah. He said, thou madest him a little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. And did set him over the works of thy hands. 
We are set over the works of his hands. Because he created the world. He created the world. So when God sees the world, he doesn't see a world that is governed by the devil. He doesn't see a world that is ruled by the devil. And therefore the devil becomes number one in it. He sees us as the one that he has set over his works. So when we stand, God does not see a man that is on, that needs, that the devil is not a fight for you. He's a fight for the unbelievers, but you have passed through death. You have come into life. So when God sees you, he sees a man that is in charge of his works. What is his works? The cosmos. I created this world. I created these people. I want them to be mine. I want them to come to me. I don't want him to go to hell. So I want you to go and make that happen for me. But when I get there, there's a guy called the God of his world. No, he's not a God to you. He was a God to the first Adam. Now you don't, you don't know the first Adam. You, are not, you, you don't know anybody from the first Adam. So you are not according, you are, you are not partaking in the corruption of the world. Because the life of the spirit is now in you. So when the, when the devil sees you, he sees a man in charge of the world. And that's why he wants to turn the world upside down. That's why he wants to make it look like it's not possible for you to fulfill the vision. How can you go to Syria now? How can you go to Syria now? How can you go to that kind of country now? But we can go if, if there was some business there for us. Come on, talk to me. We would have flown to that place if that place was filled with diamonds, even with ISIS on it. But we don't want to go now because God ain't saying that. God, God can't say that one. But God visited me last night. Saying what to you? Give you a new clothes, a new car, a new ring for your wife. Someone told me that God told him to buy a ring for his wife. I just strolled away. I strolled away. He said, sir, I'm talking to you. I said, you're not talking to me. Get out. When did we start talking about those shallow, stupid things in this church now? Sorry, you're, 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 you're dulling my spirit. Hallelujah. Hey, glory to God. He said, for in that he put, in that he put all, all in subjection under him. Let, he left nothing. He left nothing to be put under him. Praise the Lord. Then he says, but now we see not yet all things put under him. So we see not yet all things under him. Verse 9 he said, but we see Jesus. Say, but we see Jesus. Say with a revelation, you say, but we see Jesus. Oh, you're not hearing this tonight. They see the devil. They see all the things he does around the world. They see ISIS. But we see Jesus. So when I'm going to that place that he has called me because of overcoming the world, because that's the thing that overcomes the world, I see Jesus. Why do you get afraid of the things in that country? Why do you get afraid of the assignment he has given to you? Because of that tribe, that nation, that people, or whatever it is. Because you ain't seeing somebody. And that's why we need this camp meeting is about seeing one person. And that is Jesus. We got to see Jesus. We got to see Jesus. Who glory to God. Come on, blow out in tongues for a little while. Come on, say something in the realm of the spirit. I, I, I see Jesus. I don't see the limitations around me. I see Jesus. Oh, like oh, Sunday. <laughs> I see Jesus. I don't see the, the limitation of the mandate. I see Jesus. I don't see a uh, lack of money. I see Jesus. I don't see, oh, rebellious spirit. I see Jesus. I don't see ISIS. I don't see caliphate. I see Jesus. I don't see how broke I am. I don't see how poverty streaking it has been financially. I see Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at what it says. It said, but it became of him. It became, he said, but we see Jesus who made a little, who was made a little lower than the angels so for the sufferings of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, 
that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man to every man to, for every man for it became of him by whom are all things by whom are all things and by whom in bringing many sons so is the man a son look at you and say I'm right there I'm, that, that's me right there that's me right there many sons unto glory and he said to make the captain of their salvation perfect so when we talk about being saved we're not talking about probability here. When we talk about salvation in countries and nations and in the hearts of people, we're not talking about probabilities here. Because God has made their salvation perfect through suffering. He said, for both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. Who sanctified us? Jesus. Through his blood. And we we are sanctified and say we are what? One. For this cause is not ashamed to call them brethren. Oh, shouldn't that just remind you when I say brethren? Or oh, I call you brother because that's the word brother. That's the, that's the King James way of saying brother. If I call you brother something. Or brother John. Brother Shem. Shem brother. You know what that should remind you? It should remind you of this. That it's not ashamed to call you a brother. Because you have been sanctified. But we are sanctified for a reason. He said, but we see not all things put under him. The Hebrew author is communicating something great here. This sounds like being defeated. Because you are the host, the vessel. You know, we're talking about faith, the anointing, and what? The vessel. Faith, anointing, vessel. What Jesus did by tasting death for every man has been transitioned to us as an assignment without which the world will not be saved. That's why the Hebrew author said, but we see not all things under him. That means what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary is a legal provision. Now, there are a lot of people who goes against the laws. There's a legal law about a lot of things in this country. Some of us don't even know our rights. And so, when we're a victim, we don't know. When we're not a victim, we don't know. But sometimes we know and we go against it. Can I shock you? The world knows that Jesus is Lord. I'm going to say that again. The world, by all their statistics, know that Jesus is Lord. But they never give that to him. There are news that should have been the best, the trending news around the world. But because it's about faith, it's about miracle, it's about Jesus, it doesn't make CNN. So, when it, remember that the things we have heard is spoken now, and that is spoken as what? Jesus. Because now God speaks to us through what? His son. Come on, are you hearing this? Go to Hebrew chapter, chapter, uh, chapter 1. Let's read verse 1 together. I think I want some of us to get it so that we can, we can, we can have this. He said, God who had, at sundry times and, and in diverse manners spake in time past. Some say in time past. To the fathers by the prophet, verse 2, hath in these last days, you see that? Hath means it's done. There's no reversal. So he says, uh, 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 hath in these last days spoken unto us by what? His son. So when God is speaking to you, he's speaking Jesus to you. So anything God is going to say has to be about Jesus. Are you hearing this? Do you understand that? So God's not going to speak and talk about prophets. He's not going to speak and talk about angels. He's going to talk about Jesus. It has to be about Jesus, all right? Then he says, then he, then he says in verse chapter 2, he says, he said, take heed to the things which you have heard. Now, how do you hear? You hear by the word. And then God has spoken to you by what? So you substitute that word by Jesus, the word of God. So take heed to the things that you have heard. All right? So the word of God that we have heard, the Bible says that, you know, first of all, what you must understand that when the word of God comes to you, faith comes to you. So when God speaks Jesus to you, what comes to you? Faith. All right? 
Because he speaks to us now through his son. So everything he wants to speak is about the son. It's all about the son. The son, the son, the son. That's why when we get to heaven, you're not going to see God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You see the son. He's his kingdom. All right? So he says, he says to him, he says to you, when, I, when you hear the word of God, what have you heard? You heard Jesus. And then faith comes. Hallelujah. So when faith comes, the Bible says, lest they sleep. That means it's possible for you to have the word of God and it sleeps. And that's pretty much the reason why we have not been operating in that realm. Remember, you're the vessel. The faith that has come to you takes a lot. Because the devil doesn't like what you want to do. Are you hearing this? And so he comes to you in different ways and different manners to take that word out of you. And so when he takes that word out of you, he has taken faith. And when you don't have faith, your spirit man, you can still function, but your spirit man cannot. Because that's the only thing that it, not, it that notches it. If you introduce idiomatic expression to your spirit, it's still dead. No matter how logically it sounds. Because only the word of faith quickens your spirit. He said the words that I speak to you are spirit. And they are life. Are you hearing this? And he says the word of God is quick. He said it's, it's able to pierce through the asunder of the soul and the body. The bone and the marrow. So the word of God is not going to the flesh. It's not falling on the skin. It's penetrating the spirit. You understand that? So when you allow... How do we, this faith that overcomes the world, how do we put it at war? When we are able to guard our spirit by understanding that the devil is going to come for it. The Bible said the human spirit is the candlelight of the Lord that searcheth the inner parts of the belly. So the candlelight of the Lord, what reveals the will of God to you is your human spirit. And so the reason why there's no victory in the church it's not because victory is not already legally made available. It's because people are not vitally working in the legal provision. And the reason for that is because you have to be conscious of what the legal provision is. When a lawyer is talking, he doesn't say, um, 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 wait, wait, my lord. Then he, I don't know, I don't know, but this man, please, just don't kill him. He doesn't do that. He knows what he's saying. He's read it. She knows it. She will tell you the section. He will tell you everything you need to know about that. And he says, my Lord, I rest my case. And when he says, I rest my case, he has been able to convince. So when you have the word of God in your spirit, you have become a man with a weapon. And so when the devil sees that weapon, that's why I love what Pastor Dela said yesterday, that the battle against your life is ultimately about the word of God in your yes. spirit. He's, he's not just saying, hey, he, you had an accident with your car, and so the devil is glorified. He, he's more glorified when you lose a soul and you're not walking in the will of God for your life. And you can, God can give you another, another car. But that man, if he dies, that's the end. He has lost. You didn't lose. Look at the prodigal son. He was not the one that lost something. It was the father that lost something. But I said, oh, I, he said, I found. The, the guy that was lost, I found him. You think your backsliding is, is, is good for you? You think your, 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 your laudation syndrome is, is, is just something we complain about in church? No, it affects God. You know, she said your faith affects the vision. That's awesome. That's awesome. I can allow my, I wake up every day thinking, Lord, talk to me. I need faith for another day. You don't just get here. Especially if you started the way we started. Are you catching what I'm saying here? Because you are starting by faith. It's all about faith. How do you know God is telling you something? Check out if it required faith. If it does not require faith, you can tell this, the devil himself is the one dishing it out in your spirit. No matter how logical it sounds and spiritual it sounds. You know, you know, one of the apostles said, you know, this thing that you are wasting here, this woman is just wasting this, this oil. We could just sell it and give it to the poor. Jesus said, this is not about the poor. He said, the poor will always be among you. Go to Africa in another 2,000 years to come. You see poor people. So this is not about being poor. This woman is doing something here. You know what she's doing? She's embalming me. She's embalming me because my barrier is coming. 
They didn't even understand that the woman was fulfilling something. Look at something, it's about Jesus. Oh, she thought she was just worshipping God, but Jesus said she's embalming me for my burial. He said, this is a memorable worship. You know, you thought you just came and cleaned this thing. He said, no, that's memorable for me. Say no. Say don't 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 say you want to sell it and no. See, we could sell off everything here and we all go to America. <laughs> Come on, talk to me. And have some fun in Miami. And God is merciful. He's not gonna kill us. Is he gonna kill us? He said, that's the mentality of a lot of people. Yeah. If I don't go, will God kill me? I beg. Oh, see, the pastor, he has a he has a wife, he has a car. They don't understand. That you got your wife, your car, your house, your belt, your your carpet, everything by faith. Whatsoever is born of God. Hallelujah. So Jesus, I mean the Bible now is saying, you know, that they receive the just recompense of reward. The words that they heard in the days when Jesus had not come. It received a just recompense of reward. How much more the days that Jesus have come. So we're not talking about the same thing here. We're not talking about you doing what Elijah did here. That's why I told the disciples, no, 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 no. You don't have that spirit in you. No, no, don't do that. Don't do that. That's not what we do here. You're better than Elijah. You, know, you don't have to call fire down. No, we don't talk like that. We don't call that. We don't talk like that. We don't roll like that. You got to know this. And they say, okay, okay, master. See, he was, he, was, he was teaching and training them about the consciousness of the new thing. A new spiritual age. A new chapter of the anointing. A new way of God's operation. He said, we don't do like that anymore. He said, this is what we do now, praise the Lord. So we have become the vessel. The Bible says something here. It says, it received commensurate report, results. So when the, angel, when the prophet spoke, people saw it. How much more when God speaks? So what God is saying, all prophets, go outside. Don't talk to my sheep anymore. Guys, I want to talk to you myself. So that's why you can't say you can't hear God. That's why you don't have to pay somebody to hear God for you. He's speaking to you. And he has spoken to you already. He has spoken to you through Jesus. Hallelujah. Then he said, how shall we escape? I need someone to answer that question tonight before we go. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? What is the great salvation he's talking about here? Is he talking about, you know, you know, maybe Pastor Mark got born again in uh, Miami and I got born, born again in Oshobo. So he had a so great salvation. Is that what he's talking about? What did he call salvation? He called the words that he spoke salvation. Take heed. The things that you have, you have heard, lest they sleep. And said, through it, through it, through it, through it, through it, this happened. This received a just recompense of reward. And he said, so how shall we neglect so great? So what is this so great salvation? The word spoken by God. So if to overcome the word is to win the world, it means that we are the custodian of the so great salvation. And who is the so great salvation? Jesus himself. Are you, hearing, are you getting what I'm saying tonight? So how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? So great salvation is a person. That is Jesus in you. Say, I have a so great salvation in me. Say, I have a so great salvation in me. Say, his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. So the salvation of the world is the victory of the church over it. The salvation of the world is the victory of the, world, of the church over it. It is not the church cursing it. It is not the church shining in it. It is not the church building houses in it. It's not a church getting married in it. It's not a church being popular in it. It's not the church, and it's not. It's all. It's, all, it's definitely not a caliphate. Are you hearing this? That's a political word. It would have made sense if it was not political. They want to take over the world. Now they have announced that the whole world is caliphate for them. So they have roots everywhere. Who knows? They are just down the road. Who knows what can happen tomorrow? Praise the Lord. And that's why they need to drop their guns and let's fight. Because when they know when they drop their guns and let's fight, we win. Are you hearing this? Come on, if Allah is that powerful and Allah can do all things, just tell them receive Allah and something happens to them. And they say, oh, I receive. 
And then you can tell the whole world and say, you see, we didn't touch them. But you are raping the mother in front of the son. You are putting gun in front of, a, to train a, a, a six-year-old boy to kill an elder. You are, you, that's Islam. And that's not God. Are you hearing this? That's caliphate. We are not called to operate caliphate. We are called to operate the kingdom of God. And the weapon we use is not gone. It's not AK-47. The weapon we use is Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, but in a certain place, what is man that is man? Are you mindful of him? Say, God is mindful of me. And he's visiting me. Hallelujah. Before I go tonight, one of the things I want you to also understand is the fact that we have misinterpreted what the sovereignty of God is. In Hebrews chapter 2, what this means is that you now have the great salvation on the inside of you. In chapter 1, there is a transition from the prophets and the angel to Jesus. In chapter 2, there is a transition from Jesus to you. So in chapter 1, it says, hey, prophets, go and sleep, sit down. Don't worry, we don't need you now. When Jesus came, when he was done, finished, he said, go ye into all the world. Say, so I give you, so all authority has been given to me, but you go. In other words, I've resigned. Are you hearing this? That's why he couldn't do miracles when he got out of the grave. That's why he didn't go to, he didn't walk on waters. His ministry was done. Oh, how we need to get conscious of the ministry of the believer. There were not just a bunch of people that got born again and we're going to one church and one pastor and then we preach and we, want, we do evangelism. No, we are more than that. We're in charge of this world. We're the caretakers here. I don't care the location of ISIS. I don't care the location of, of Boko Haram. I don't care. We own this world. We have the power to overcome it. Are you, getting, are you catching what I'm saying here? Some of you want to see Jesus. We will all see Jesus someday. No. It's going to be useless seeing him physically if you can't see him now. He said, we see Je said, but we see Jesus. You see, all things that were not subject unto He said, but all things have not been subject to him. We don't see all things under his feet yet. So keep, when you define sovereignty without you in it, you are religious. Anything that happens is God. We don't know what God used you to do. Something evil happened. You don't define the sovereignty of God as anchored to evil. Because God is not responsible for evil. Listen, when the angel of death came to, e to Egypt, somebody once asked me, say, Pastor, so God sent an angel of death. I said, God didn't. God couldn't if he wanted to. God is love. If God wanted to kill everybody in Egypt, he didn't have to kill all the sons. He would kill Pharaoh himself. That's the end. That's the end. I will take my people out. No, no, no. Okay, Pharaoh, stay there. I, I, see, the Bible said Jesus walked through the crowd. And they didn't see him. You think he could not lift two? Oh, are you hearing this? You think my God cannot lift two million people out of their house? He, he did it once. And they were like, they saw greater light. Because there was darkness all over Egypt. But where the children of God, the children of Israel were, there was light. So Pharaoh came. Pharaoh was like this. He was the richest man. But it was, there was no fan. It was, it, it was seeing light. He said, how, how did they do it? And when God took them out of that place, the Bible said there was light in front of them. There was fire behind them. And none of them were feeble. Because you can't be in that atmosphere and be feeble. As long as he's moving with you, he's with, come on to say, say, the Lord is with me. That, he said, that's why he, he surrounds me with that fire. So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm living in this world, but I'm living in a cubicle of the anointing. I'm not, I'm not alone. I'm not, I'm not going to, it's not going to touch me. You see, that disease, mm, that, that ain't mine. Because I got something. I'm living inside something. So God could have done it. He wasn't the one that sent the angel of death. No, God did not send angel of death. God knew that if he removed his hand, watch this. If he removed his hand from Egypt, the whole of Egypt belonged to the devil. You see, because I told their father that they would come out with a great substance. So I have been keeping that country because of them. 
So the day he said he won't let them go, and you will not overcome, and you would get my because he was to go there and overcome that that cosmos. That was the vessel, and he needed faith, and the anointing. That's why you need the anointing. We can't just talk about faith. You need the anointing to well up on the inside of you. You look at Pharaoh in the eye and say, God said, Ale, Masha, Male. He says, I am that I am. I'm not just. Pharaoh said, I am. I'm sure he laughed. I said, This guy has lost his mind. That's what happens to you when you stay in the desert for over 40 years. Mosey, Mosey. You are now talking like a stupid man. Are you hearing this? So when God said, oh, he's not going to allow people to go, my hand's off. But I need to protect you guys. And the day God said, my hands are off, the angel of death had the right to come in. And God said, I know the angel of death is going to come. But you guys, you know what we're going to do? You're going to put the blood on your lintels. Go kill animals. Put it on your lintels. He said, that's the only thing that would save you. So the angel of death came not from the Lord. Killed everybody. He wanted to go into the houses of the Israelites, but he couldn't go. Because it wasn't from the Lord. So everybody was dying, but they weren't dying. Are you getting what I'm saying? Where did they get money to, or food to eat when all the, all, the, all the frogs are eating all their cultivation? Where were they getting food from? You didn't ask yourself that. We talk about manna, but we don't talk about how God sustained them through those period. Knowing fully well that they were responsible for it. When the blood, when the, the water turned to blood, which, which water were they saying? You see, look, the Bible didn't say some things, but when you meditate, you will see those things. That's what she was saying. We need to see these things. And you can't see them without meditation. Hallelujah. So the angel of death is not from the Lord. It's never from the Lord. So all these uh, angel of death, the spirit of death, uh, something death, 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 all those things. No, you need to show the prophets the way out. Hallelujah. Because you have Jesus. Hallelujah. Show them, say, that's the door. I'm no more going to, I'm not, I'm not coming for deliverance again. He didn't say we see oil. He didn't say we see bottles. He said, but we see Jesus. Hallelujah. So the sovereignty of God is, is, seen, is seen as God being responsible for everything. No, don't ever define the sovereignty of God like that anymore. The sovereignty of God should never be defined as him being responsible for everything that takes place in the world. Hallelujah. He's not the initiator of everything you see around you. Are you hearing this? He's not the initiator of everything you see around you. He didn't give Satan the permission to do anything according to what somebody said. Are you hearing this? You know, when Paul said, Satan buffeted me, God didn't say, of course, I know. <laughs> it's, my, it's, my, it's my dude. You know, I, you, don't worry, he won't kill you. I'm aware. No, he didn't say that. He said, I've given you grace. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. He didn't say, oh, I know. I, know. I, I told him to buffet you. Just kick you well. He didn't say that. So don't say God is punishing me by, by some things I'm going through. I've made some mistakes in my life. You know, if we begin to dwell in that level, the devil knows that when we begin to dwell in a place of condemnation, we won't go for the assignment. Come on, talk to me. And that was what Pastor Boom was, think, was talking about. He said, no, 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 no. Isaiah said, I'm a man of unclean lips. God said, who told you? You're a man of unclean lips? No, where did you get that? So I'm going to put a coal in your mouth. I'm going to burn everything you're talking about. So after I do that, what are you going to do now? You see, God is removing excuses in front of his people. He's bringing his church to a place where they will win through the scripture without any excuse. Because we are born of God. And we are born of his world. Hallelujah. So any definition of sovereignty of God that is all about evil is evil in itself. It's a perverted definition of God to say that he's responsible for everything that died and everything. No. No, he went about doing good. He went about doing good. He went about doing good. He didn't go to kill them. He didn't go to condemn them. He didn't go to kill their enemies. If God really answers the prayer of the people that kills their enemy by fire, everybody would die by now, including the pastor himself. Because he is an enemy of somebody. Come and talk to me. Our need for victory is as much important as our need for understanding of sovereignty and our place in God. Stop living in this mystery. God, we don't know what he used you to do. No. He showed Moses his ways. He showed Moses. That's an old prophet that now has, made, has been made 
inferior to you because of Jesus. Hallelujah. So Jesus walked through the crowd. Nobody killed him. Nobody touched him. It was the anointing of the Lord. Hallelujah. But the Bible says that they, they, they caught Stephen and they killed him. It's about your consciousness of who you are. Are you catching what I'm saying here? Jesus walked through the cloud. Why? Because he had the power and the anointing. He was conscious of who he was. It wasn't time yet. But the Bible says Stephen, they caught him and they killed him right there. They stoned him to death. He died. Did God cause that? As I said, we have not seen everything under him yet. God didn't cause that. In fact, the church prayed and Peter was freed from the prison. But the church watched Stephen die. It could have been avoided. Moses in the flesh was the one that was raised in his palace. So in the, the man that was raised in the flesh, you could, you could look at him and say, shut up there. And he was shut. But Moses was now born of God. He was no more accord, or living according to the profiles of the flesh. He was no more the guy in the basket that Pharaoh helped. He is no more owing Pharaoh any favor. Are you hearing this? He is now an enemy. He is now the wall. He said the church is the governing power that silences the kingdom of darkness in the world. And if we do not take our place, we are going to allow many go to hell. And God will not be pleased with that. Because only faith pleases him. Hallelujah. Let the anointing arise in you. David came to the valley of Elah. 40 days, 40 nights. Goliath of Gath looks at everybody and says, I'm going to kill you. And the Bible says that he came into the place with cheese and bread. And he said, what's going on here? He said, that's the guy. He said, he looked at him very well. Watch this, watch this. He looked at him very well. He recognized that he was not born of God. What, 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 was, what was the secret of David's victory? It was knowledge. Can you imagine? So you win by just checking people out. So I, I don't know. Hey, all the demons, all the demons. I first see, you see, all the witches, all the witches. Go and check the witch out. First of all, he's not born again. How are you stressing yourself? That's what David did. Everybody did not look at his face. Look at something, look at his face. He was, he was looking. I'm sure they were wondering, what's this short boy doing here? What is, he was looking. Said, ah. Israelites are not like this. He went back and said, oh, where's the king? He said, where's the king? He said, king? What, what do you want to say? I'll, I'll kill that guy. He said, you'll kill him. He's been fighting from his youth. He's Goliath of Gath. Philistine. He said, oh, Philistine. I, I, thought, so much. I thought as much. He's a Philistine, Abby. I will kill him for you. He went ahead to bet. Are you catching what I'm saying? Yes, what would they give me? But you see, that was not his, that was not the end. His secret was looking very well at Goliath. He just looked at him and said, This guy is a Philistine. Guess what Saul said? He said, ah, no, 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 you can't go, you're too young. He said, ah, king. See, lion, you know lion. You know bear. My, you see my hand. I killed it by the anointing. So this one is cheaper than this one. And see, he had to stress himself like this. Oh, oh, and the lion died. He killed Goliath like a rat. He did like this. That's what he did. Some of you thought he did like this. He was not trained to throw stones. So don't call it. It's not Olympics. Okay? He, he threw it anyhow. Let the stone just touch him. That's all God needed. He said, he said, he said, he said, feel this. Oh my God. I wish he looked at the face of the devil and looked at him very well. Because what he saw, he saw Jesus. 
Jesus, I'm going to kill this guy. With Jesus, this guy is going down. And he went and bragged. They gave him her armor. The Holy Spirit told me, said, you know, that's, that's losing. Because your weapon is not carnal. Your weapon is your faith. Come and talk to me. Say, take it off. He said, sir, but it was wise not to tell him, the, tell Saul the way the Holy Spirit told him. So he said, uh, sir, sir, let me just go like this. I'm fine. What happened? Looked at Felicity. That, the, guy, the guy laughed when he saw him. He said, <laughs> I can imagine a giant laughing. You know, that like, oh, 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 that's how it's going to sound. And the moment he was laughing, I'm sure some Israelites went back. They were not even close to him. Just that he laughed, everybody went back. That's how, that's how some of you are scared, how much you're scared about the things that God has called you to do. Remember, this is a man on a mandate, and he has to win the world by his faith. And then he stepped into that place, the guy was laughing. <laughs> and David looked at him. You know what he said? He said, you came to me with those things. Said, but I come to you in the name. But we see Jesus. He said, I, I come to you in the name of the Lord. I, I, I try, I'm not coming to you by nothing. I can imagine uh, God, God, I say, that's the more reason why I'm laughing. You are about to die. Read your Bible. There's no time. So let, go and read your Bible. The Bi watch this. Watch this. The Bible says, as, as he began to speak, he said, I will give your head. You see, he was already speaking. Faith. I will give your head to the fowls of the air. They will chop it. Today I will kill you. You see, when you are to overcome, you speak with the consciousness of the kingdom authority. He didn't say, King, I will try new. I will just try new. He didn't do that. So I'll go. Ah, nations. Sir. So, they are not giving their lives to Christ in that country. Yeah, have you seen people? They say, come back, come back, come back home. That country is not yours. Which one is yours then? Which one? The far Balewa Crescent? So he, 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 he didn't say that. He went with kingdom authority. And he looked at it and said, what? What? And then he began to talk. Allah Learn how to speak. He does something to him. He does something to the adversary. It's funny that when we say confession, everything some of you see is father in the Catholic church. That's not confession. Confession is you putting the word of God in your mouth. He said, today I will. Because God already said, I will, I will, I will, you will die by my hand today. The Lord will give you into my hand. He guy was using the name of the Lord. But we see Jesus, but we see Jesus, but we see Jesus. But the guy didn't get it. The guy didn't understand it. Got, but he got to a time that he began to speak and the thing was getting to him was getting to Goliath guess what he did the guy did took his stuff and about to move the Bible said the moment watch this the moment David saw that he moved the Bible said David ran towards him yeah. oh you're not here you're not catching this he, he, he didn't he didn't do he didn't the moment he moves with those big legs and say boom something that done yes you can come now you can come and then you go. The moment he did, okay, I'm done talking to you. And he did that. Oh my God. And anger came to David. He said, oh, because I'm just talking to you? You want to die? Come on, talk to me. The moment Goliath did this, the Bible said, David ran towards him. I'm sure David, I'm sure Goliath felt like, hey, this small boy. He was still thinking that he was too small. He just, the next thing he heard was ghost. They think you are too young. They think that you are just a woman. They think that you can't preach like your father. They think that they think. But before they know it, they will hear the sound of failure. And we will win. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet. And I want you to take your place tonight. Like a David stand. I don't know how many Davids are in this room. I don't know how many Moseses are in this room, but I want you to wake up in your spirit. The anointed stepped in. He ran towards it. He tried to it. Somebody tonight, run towards that thing. Run towards that ministry. Run towards that calling. 
Say to yourself, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to win. I'm ready to do it. I don't care who is the king of Sidon. I don't care who is the king of Tyre. I am ready. I am running. I am not waiting. I am not weary. I have faith. I overcome. Somebody rise to your feet. I'm a bo shandala. Hello bo kosi. Hello bo kosi. Hello bo shanda. Hello bo shanda. Come on, take your place in the ministry. Take your place. Take your place. Speak to that Pharaoh. Speak to that fear. Speak to it right now. Come on, tonight is the night of the next level in your ministry. Let go of the past. Let go of yesterday. Let's go of Abba House six years. Come on, I see 2016. I see a new spiritual age. I see the Davidic anointing. I see the Lord touching the world. I see the sound of failure. sound of failure in the camp of the enemy somebody take your place stop fighting with yourself stop condemning yourself stop getting too conscious of your sins stop saying i'm not worthy this is a time don't say i don't want to be chastised it's okay as long as i am the man that god is sending i have faith i have your anointing I am the vessel. I have faith. I am the anointing. I am the vessel. I am the vessel. I'm on my way to Canada. I'm on my way to Berlin. I'm on my way to Italy. Come on, somebody talk to me. Whatsoever Canada he gives to you, whatsoever, whatsoever Mumbai he gives to you, whatsoever Kenya he gives to you, whatsoever Abuja he gives to you, whatsoever Johannesburg he gives to you, whatsoever assignment, whatsoever America, whatsoever Asia, whatsoever Malaysia, whatsoever North America, whatsoever Mexico, somebody's going to the Philistines. Somebody's getting ready. Hello, Mo Shakaraba. Hello, Mo Sunda Babakosa. Hello, Mo Shakaraba. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Sunda. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, time is fast spent. But don't ever be deceived. Okay. Watch this. Watch this. If you're here and you want to start all over again, there were things that you lost because you didn't understand the call. Moses tried to save the Israelites, but he was saving the Israelites without seeing the Lord. He didn't know God, but he wanted to save. But victory belongs to those that are born of God. And God said, I got to withdraw. And I feel like God has withdrawn some of you for a while. Some say for a while. And in this day, there is a release of the anointing for a new beginning. A lot of us, somebody said last night, said, some of us are detached. We're here, but we're detached. I'm calling you tonight. This is the Spirit of God talking to you right now. I want you to raise your hand. I want to speak to you. I'm talking to people who are saying, Lord, I'm ready to go again. Start again. I'm going to sing that song to the end that the world is overcome. I'm not just going to go with some African song, Nigerian beat, just to get money in my pocket. I'm going to sing this on the nations gonna preach this until nations bow I'm gonna serve my way to the double portion I'm gonna be a Joshua until I become the one that leads them into the promise so wherever you are whether you are serving under Moses or you are raising his hand somewhere or you are Moses 
that he has sent to a place or he wants to send to a place tell him I'm ready again and you know what tonight raise your hand and say Jesus I want to see you one more time he said in the same year that King Uzziah died he said I see the Lord I saw the Lord above the train he said his train filled the temple in the same year of death of a king he saw the Lord in the same year that the king died oh somebody's about to hear the news because God is taking something out Uzzah is a Hebrew word that means strength and he said and he was a protege to the prophet and so he felt so bad that all oh, this thing has gone why because Uzzah was his strength in the flesh I can say I want to take out your strength in the flesh stop prophesying from the flesh stop singing and preaching from the flesh stop ministering from the flesh he said that same year I saw the Lord I saw the Lord. Somebody cry out tonight and say, Jesus, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. Countless nights in my room, he will show up in my room and tell me, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Somebody's operating in fear right now about what you're called to do, about the places you should go, the decisions that you need to make about certain things in the kingdom.